Hi, today I'll be showing how to do a proper titration experiment at home. As you can see, I have the proper equipment and I'm going to be showing uh, my daughter how to do that. You need to have the proper lab equipment and solutions prepared ahead of time so everything's ready. Notice the safety equipment as well, my safety glasses, my glove, because the concentration that we're working is a little bit uh, high, um, somewhere between one or two mole unknown acid. So, and also the base as well, one mole of base, okay, for titration. So this is very important that if you're working with high concentration of acid base, and as a you know precaution, you need to wear safety goggles anyway, and a glove, and of course a lab coat. All right, let's get started. I'll show you all the equipments and then uh, how we go about doing titration if you have the right uh, equipment at home. Let's get started. Okay, so what you need first, of course, is the retort uh, stand, or we call it the uh, clamp stand. Here we have this uh, burette clamp. This is a butterfly burette clamp. It's made of plastic. I got it from Amazon. It's quite, quite uh, affordable. Now, along with that, of course, you need the burette, which is this one here. This one, I believe, is made of plastic. Ideally, you should get a glass. Yeah, this is plastic. It looks like it's glass, but I think it's plastic. But ideally you want a glass, but uh, you know, glass would be a bit more. But since we're working with not such a high concentrated uh, base or acid, I think uh, plastic it should be fine uh, for short term use. We're talking about a couple years, but if you're uh, thinking about using it for 10 years, you might want to get a glass type of uh, burette, which is probably a better uh, built, but it will be much more expensive. Okay, so have that ready. Next thing you want to have is of course is the graded cylinder. I have two of these, one for uh, putting the distilled water, the other one to put the unknown acid. Okay, and then of course you need the Erdmeyer flask as well for the titration. Um, here we have the indicator. Now the one I'm going to be using is the Fino Red. The reason I'm using that is because it is readily available in the uh, pool section. So if you're you know maintaining your pools, if you want to go to uh, a store to get it, it's usually found in the pool section. This is Fino. Uh, red, okay. So that's indicating use. Now, ideally, I would want to use um, phenol thaline, but I don't have that. Very hard to get access to it, so I end up getting the phenol red as my indicator. Of course, then you need the the titration solution itself. This is the base that you have to know the known concentration. This is 1.09 moles. The reason I'm using high concentration because the unknown acid, the one here, I know that it's going to be between 0.5 to two mole lower concentration. So I would need something around that uh, area in terms of concentration. So the reason for that is you don't want to use too much if it's diluted, right, base, and you don't want it to be too concentrated, uh, then you're going to use such a small sample that, uh, you know, if you make a little mistake, it will show up in your data. So ideally, what you want is you want the almost the right concentration between the acid and base and when you do the titration, you'll get, you know, let's say, this, you can bring it all the way up to 50 mils. And if, let's say, um, it's similar in concentration, you can do actually three titration, and you average the three, and you'll get an average value that is very uh, close to the realistic value. Okay, that's very important. Just keep that in mind when you're preparing these type of uh, solution, especially if you're a lab technician or, you know, um, a teacher. Just make sure that these two solutions are in alignment and then you can the student can then do three titration or two titration at once instead of wasting time trying to fill it all the way up uh, to zero mark okay that's very important so we set to usually we set to zero marking it doesn't have to be zero marking it could be somewhere like uh, 0 0.5 0 0.1 it doesn't really matter so you record it uh, in your lab book so make sure you, you give the students or uh, who's involved in the lab to have a lab manual so they can write the data in, of course, calculator and a pencil or a pen, really doesn't matter. Have it all set up and then we can fill up the table and you're ready to go, okay? You would also need sodium bicarbonate just in case you spill uh, the acid, have that available always, okay? And then distilled water is always handy, it's always needed. 
Okay, so since I'm gonna fill up uh, 20 mils of distilled water, 10 mils of the unknown acid, I'm gonna pour into this Erdmeyer flask, and I'll add three drops of the phenolphthalein, and then that's it. And then what we'll do is we're gonna put the base, fill it all the way up into the burette, and we'll get started. Okay, so fill it all the way up to zero, and then we'll titrate downwards until we see the color change. Using the phenol red, the, the, the solution will be a little bit yellow, ish like right? yellowish color and then when you titrate it'll turn uh, pink or red instantly okay so my daughter's gonna do the experiment and I'll show you the process of the whole experiment itself okay so let's do that right now <laughs> 